Welcome back, lads and ladies, to another episode of War Thunder on Toshio Thunder Channel. Today we're going to take a look at the BF109F4 in the American Premium line. This is a rank, correct me if I'm wrong, 3 Premium at a battle rating 3.7 in Air RB. And I'm rocking the Undertale custom camo that I made for this quite a while back. And uh, it's one of the custom camos that I'm very pleased with. This is back when I used to spend a lot of time on one camouflage. Because, well, I had a lot of time. <laughs> That's when uh, Tank Baby was, uh, was fresh out of, the, out of the factory. And she spent most of her time napping. Of course, now she spends most of her time uh, clinging to Dada. And demanding entertainment so I'm a little bit more busy <laughs> than I was back then uh, so let's speed this up to the point where we can actually find the enemy and go from there this match turned out to be pretty good for me so I hope to show what you can do in the BF 109 and actually I suppose while we're climbing and looking at the scenery I can talk a little bit about the vehicle. Uh, if you aren't familiar with the BF 109 F4, there are very many models of the 109 in the game, and each one performs a little bit differently than the others, to the point where late model 109s fly totally differently than the F4. In my humble opinion, the F4 is the finest model of BF-109 with a great balance of a, of a stupendous climb rate for its battle rating at 20 meters per second uh, when compared with things like the uh, P-47 that's going to get around uh, 12 to 14 meters per second depending upon things and stuff. And now I'll turn on the UI for you so you can see where the enemy is. I said we we're going to speed things up. We'll see. Today I was flying with, uh, let's see, half cased, half cast. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's got an E in the halfy, so I'm going to call it half cased to give it a little bit more of a of a oceanic vibe. Anyway, <laughs> talking a little bit more about the 109 F4. It has a great climb rate. It's your typical uh, boom and zoomer slash energy fighter. It turns better than a P-47. It climbs better than a P-47. But you don't get the air spawn. So if you're going to end up above everybody, you see our altitude's around 4,000. We want to be around 5,000 kilometers high before we engage the enemy. So we're getting upwards of 4,000. And there's a Heinkel 111H diving down below us and I'm considering if I want to go after him or continue to climb and we decide to go for him and a quick burst gets a lucky kill on him we throw a few more rounds in there just for fun and spite and uh, the Menenga Shoss now's a good time to talk about the armament you have a 20 millimeter um I can't remember exactly the model of the cannon, sorry, but it fires the famous Menenga Shoss round, and it's a very reliable 20 mil, lower muzzle velocity than the Hispano cannon, but it tends to sparkle less in my experience, which is which is nice. And when you hit with those high explosive incendiaries or APHE, the enemy aircraft is going to evaporate rather rapidly so it's a very reliable gun and it's mounted through the engine which gives you a good uh, line of fire if you will it shoots in the same direction of the flight of your airplane which is which is rather nice less parallax error if you will mounted in the cowling above the engine are two uh, let's see, rifle caliber 7.9 um, rapid fire machine guns with 500 rounds each. Oh, and by the way, you got 200 rounds for your 20 mil. So, decent amount of uh, ability to sustain your fire and stay in the fight. 
and with a little bit of ammo management you can get four or five kills uh, with no issues. Fuck a wolf above us and I don't know what he's doing but he's not going to be doing it for much longer <laughs> and we take him down. Uh, we sprayed a little bit more than we needed to there but we're running stealth rounds and we haven't quite gotten a feel for our guns yet. It's been a long time since I used the German 20 mils but you see that when those rounds connect they just shred things and even the the durable airframe of the Focke Wolf uh, is not able to stand up against that kind of punishment. Now we look behind us <laughs> and the whole enemy team is behind us. I really don't feel like uh, like engaging them so now I'm diving on this BF-109 who I should be able to catch. So let's talk a little bit more about energy fighting. Uh, I've told you that I want to be above the enemy and when you see a bunch of enemies at your altitude it might be a good idea to extend a little bit away from them and not be their first target. And here you see us trying to get some hits on that 109F. Uh, if we can do some damage to him when we enter the turn fight phase here, as you see, he's he's evading. And we didn't immediately follow him. We extended out behind him a little bit. And that gives us more room to maneuver. Uh, if he turns and then we immediately turn, then we, we have to turn harder to stay on his tail you know what I'm saying so this is also part of energy fighting is to decide when you're going to delay and I hear an enemy fighter above me and I didn't see where he was but I saw him on the mini map and I still don't know where that guy was but I decided to pull off and do some defensive flying because I heard an ally get evaporated and that is usually not a good sign <laughs> so that uh, enemy BF 109 F4 managed to live for a little while longer because I decided to try and preserve myself against the Phantom Menace and of course as you know the best way to save yourself from the Phantom Menace is not to go see it in theaters. <laughs> Bad joke. And what you cannot see right now is that my engine is cooking. So another thing about the 109s is their engines run very hot. Uh, the Germans squeezed as much performance as they possibly could out of this airframe and uh, that F4 is on fire we're gonna go ahead and leave him to our allies <laughs> who are just glued to his tail like any typical Spitfire pilot would be and if there's another Spitfire right next to you well oh hey it looks like that F4 put the fire out let's see if we can uh, finished the job that those his sparkos weren't able to do so we got a good lineup here on him and boom goes the dynamite that's how you finish somebody off take note children <laughs> so we've got three kills and we're low on ammunition uh, at this point we're just gonna make our way making our way downtown walking fast and be f109 what a man can meme, sir. A man can also meme. How are you guys doing today? You having a good time? So this is obviously not a guide on the BF-109 F4. Think of it more as an introduction. If you're not familiar with this aircraft, it truly is a beauty in the skies. Uh, be like your boy Toshio and be sure to climb early in the match. I climb at around 20 degrees to start with in this aircraft. Or if you're going for airspeed, uh, around 175, uh, upwards of 170 miles per hour. If you want to use metric, well, you can do the conversion on Google. And I'm sure you can find a better guide as well. <laughs> but we're heading back to base, and I'll speed things up for that, just because I care so much about you guys' time. Look at us go. <laughs> Look at us go. And let's... Uh, Look at this beautiful landing. Like a glove. And then we use the old machine gun break. Something to note about all of the 109s is how close their landing gear is together. Uh, if you don't land at a good angle in a nice straight line or if you land too hard you're gonna regret it so don't do that also look at the fine details on this camo 
it really is a good looking camo you got the little uh little Akira there with erase <laughs> by the machine gun ports look at our brave American pilot God bless America and uh, even if you look underneath there's a little surprise see that in the wheel well isn't that cool you got the flowy so here we go once again back into the fray and our team is doing fairly well and I, I expected us to win this match and honestly, I'm not sure how this one turns out for our team. But uh, we'll get more into that later. What a nice looking custom camo. I mean, obviously it's a weeb skin. But but you should know me by now <laughs> that this is what I like. So let's get back into our tactical view and turn the HUD back on. And I'm going to tell you about what happens next. So we got to climb. Uh, the enemies that are left are three fighters and they're all at high altitude. They got a C202 and I believe two Fokka Wolves. So these guys are probably, the Fokka Wolves might be a higher battle rating than me, depending upon what model they are. Um, but they definitely have better um, dive speed than me and pretty good energy retention. So I really don't want to get teamed up on by those guys so I climbed to the side a bit and they played very passively here they're being very very cautious and I was thinking that these guys must be in a squad because they're flying together they seem to be supporting each other and they've just been basically climbing the whole match and now you see that my entire team is below them sans myself so it's all up to me lads <laughs> And I don't like these odds. Uh, three very good, three very well performing aircraft at high altitude. Now at my altitude, here I am at 6K and I'm just starting to catch up with this 190. And another thing is the spotting system got a bit strange. Uh, now the pilot in this aircraft is like very, very high skill uh, and yet where I'm used to spotting people at you know around like you know 8k or so uh, here they are at five and a half kilometers and they're just they were blinking in and out of spotting and of course I still knew where they were but that's just a, something I found rather odd in this match now I was experiencing some packet loss a steady uh, one to four percent packet loss which is something I often encounter when I'm streaming and I was streaming for this match I was having a great time with Scott uh, half cased and uh, he's a military man and uh, I grew up with a uh, dad in the army so I can relate and uh, Scott just had some surgery because the armed forces destroy your body <laughs> um, but here we are moving on trying to catch up to this 190 and it looks like he's letting me catch him I think he's trying to climb as hard as he can here and then his buddy's swinging around and I knew what they were doing here if you look at the mini map they're surrounding me so they're spreading out and they're gonna do an encirclement on me and try and set up to where one of them is always on my tail so I can turn to the left and engage the guy who's coming straight for me or I can continue my course and go after the one who's more in my area but no matter what I do they're gonna be surrounding me here like a pack of wolves so I've got to fly uh, a little bit unpredictably and let me get the cursor out of the way there for you guys sorry about that and uh, let's just let's just watch what happens it's a three-on-one guys who are well coordinated and had the good sense to uh, to climb uh, I don't really agree with their decision to to climb for the whole first half of the match and just leave their team. Uh, I feel like if they'd gotten stuck in and supported their guys, they probably would have won this match a lot earlier uh, and thus had better gains and, and probably had a better time. But maybe this is the way they play the game. Uh, as it is, it's just hard for me to keep track of all of them. So I'm deliberately drawing them down to a lower altitude so that I could possibly get some assistance from my team. Uh, we've got a couple of P-51s. Among them is my buddy, Half Cased. And it looks like they're they're not 
They're not sacrificing all of their altitude to come after me. In fact, they've let me get some some separation from them. So that's good. I'm kind of buying some time for my team to climb if that's what they feel like doing. Let's speed things up a little bit here. These guys were playing very, very carefully, and now they're going after Scott. So I'm turning around, and I'm trying to support him, but he's he's just outside of my... Uh, of my AO and the C202 comes in we aim some shots and pull out before we get too committed to a head-on he's very much interested in uh, spraying shots in our general direction I'm counting on us having more speed than him and he's pulling a really um, aggressive vertical maneuver Scott gets hit hard uh, taking him out of the fight unfortunately before I was able to come and support him both of these Focke wolves are just barely within my engagement range and uh, now I'm playing as aggressively as possible because I need to take one of these guys down. I was hoping to get the C202 in that head-on and I could have stayed and taken him down. He was not flying in a way uh, that would have beat me. I'm pretty sure I could have taken him in a dogfight but then I would have left Scott out on his own and unfortunately I still wasn't able to get there in time to save him but uh, sometimes all you can do is try. Uh, this 190 is turning with me. He's at close range. I should be able to get him here. But unfortunately, I'm just not able to get the guns on target. I lose the tip of my wing. And now uh, we finish off that 190. And the other Focke Wolf shreds the rest of our wing. Uh, finishing us off. Uh, really didn't have a lot of options there. Obviously, that, that lead Focke Wolf was baiting me by turning. But... Uh, I wanted to play aggressive. I was hoping that my teammates would take the chance to do some climbing. And uh, you know what? Sometimes four kills is the best you can do. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's just kind of <laughs> this is kind of zoom in here as we watch our pilot. I think we're actually going to J out pretty soon because I do like to save the life of my pilot. But pretty fun match. Uh, faced off against some some dangerous folks and there were a few times where I had to make critical tactical decisions and when it came down to it I chose the course that would see me supporting my buddy uh, more than ensuring my own survival and I feel like that's the American way <laughs> sorry sorry if that's getting a little bit uh, a little bit dizzy for you but uh, them's the breaks Anyway, guys, as we watch my 109 plummet to the earth uh, before I could pick up the old ace, Ooh. let's just let's just get out of that H hero. That what? That's odd. That's not how that is supposed to work. Control F5. Okay, what a replace bug. Surprising no one. <laughs> so let's just get out of that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, what are your thoughts on the BF 109 F4? Do you like that vehicle? Have you played it much? Obviously it shows up in the German tree, but I am a big fan of uh, captured slash, slash lend lease aircraft to bring that meta to a different team because the energy fighting, the smooth maneuvers, uh, the good energy retention of the BF-109 F4 brings something to the American tree that it doesn't quite have in the P-47s and the Corsairs and the uh, Cobras of varying stripes. It's just a little bit different and that's something that I enjoy to see brought into the meta of American teams. So if we look at the German version Let's see, BF-109, you can see there's tons and tons of 109s that go all the way from, you know, 1.3 battle rating down there. There's even a, yeah, there's a 1.3 there as so well. Flegel's BF-109A, by the way, is a total blast to fly. I highly recommend it. I should do a little bit of work on that custom camo. I think I can make it look better. Um, and you've got your Gs and all the way up to your, yeah, BF-109K4 at battle rating of 5.3 uh, which is a monster of an aircraft but BF-109 F series F4 F4 trop I gotta I have a 
talisman that I got randomly on this one. And that's where I had a lot of fun with it. You see, I got gun pods on here. The only time I run gun pods is when I'm playing tank RB. Uh, because these 15 mils can punch through the top of a lot of tanks armor at that battle rating. In air RB, you don't want to have anything on your wings in the BF-109. You want it to have the best climb rate, energy retention, and turn time that it can have. So that you can play that boom and zoomer slash energy fighter role and outturn P-47s at high altitude. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed, and this can be a P-47 killer if you want it to be, and in the American tree it's great at taking down Fokker Wolves. Anyway guys, catch you in the next episode. Bye bye